I'll be showing you how to change out the outer tie rise on an Affinity QX56. However, this process is pretty much similar on all vehicles. This is a repair that you can do in your home garage using standard tools. Only takes about 45 minutes to do both sides. So let's learn something to save some money. These are the tools that you need to do both the inner and the outer. The outer is a little easier. Uh, you won't need the grease gun and the cordless ratchet is optional. For those who aren't familiar with tie rods, uh, tie rods connect the steering rack to the steering knuckle. Without tie rods, steering your vehicle will be impossible. They're a critical component of your vehicle steering system. A uh, few symptoms of bad tie rods. On this uh, vehicle, you can hear the clunky noises at the front driver's side wheel. Uh, the steering wheel felt a little loose. I had uneven tire wear. Two other symptoms that are common are poor vehicle alignment and unresponsive steering. Now let's get into the repairs. If you don't have a lift, you want to remove the tire on the side you'll be working on. And we can show them this thing. A bad tie rod. We got a bad tie rod. The alignment will be bad. And you'll get uneven and abnormal tire wear like seen here. Now when I'm under a vehicle, I'm very, very cautious because you don't want this thing falling on you and have a catastrophic injury, okay? So what I use is I use four jack stands and the weight is also supported by the jack here. Tie rods are important to your steering and the toe of your tires. And when I'm saying toe, that has to do with your alignment. We'll do a separate video on that. But you can tell this one is bad. Just by using my hand, there's a lot of play there, okay? So we're going to change this out and you'll see the difference. To start this repair, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this cotter pin right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend these four using our needle nose pliers. Then we're gonna pull it out, all right? Here I'm using my needle nose pliers. I'm just gonna bend this four like so. We're gonna bend that four. All right, you see how we bent that four right there? We're gonna do the same thing to the other side, then we're gonna pull it right out. I bent these both straight, now all I have to do is pull it out. I like to put a little PB blaster on it because these components have been on here for a while. This will just allow them to slide out easily. And there's our cutter pin out. All right, we applied a little bit more PB blaster right here just to loosen this up. We're gonna take our breaker bar. We have a 19 millimeter on there and we're just gonna remove this. Oh, that's coming easy. That baby's easy. Voila. Boom. Now that our castle nut is off, I'm going to use my hammer just to separate these. And look at this. This tie rod was ready to go. See how that play? You don't want that on your suspension components. So now let's get this one taken off. We're going to put the new one on. Now that this tie rod end is out, we're gonna focus on this nut right here. I've already thrown some PB blaster on her. I love to use that PB blaster to loosen things up. We're gonna put it right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen this nut up right here, okay? I've reattached this castle nut because I wanted this sturdy to give me some leverage. I'm gonna make myself uh, a makeshift pry bar uh, that I'm gonna attach to these vice grips so I can get off this uh, retaining nut right here. One thing you might have learned in science class, uh, the longer the lever, uh, the least amount of force you have to exert to make something uh, come off. I've taken the handle off of my floor jack here. I'm gonna place it on these vice grips, then I'm gonna use all my weight uh, leaning to my right 
and that's going to loosen that nut up. See how easy that is? Perfect. Take that bad boy back off. And now we're going to have to pay attention to our rotations uh, so our alignment isn't off when we put this back on. Now that we have that retaining bolt loosened up, we're going to count how many rotations it takes us to take this outer tie right off. That's important so our alignment stays the same. All right, so we're going to start counting. That's one. That's two. That's three. That's four. That's five. That's six. That's seven. That's eight. That's nine. That's 10. That's 11. 12, 13. It took us 13, 14 spins to get this off. So now what we have to do is we're just gonna put our new uh, outer tie rod on. We're gonna count, I'm gonna give it 14 spins. Um, then we're just gonna put everything back on. This is gonna be one for the driver. We're gonna be changing both sides. But again, we're gonna check to see, hey, are they the same size? Yes, they are. Uh, but look at the older one. Look at all that play in the old one. That's a bad out of tie rod. Now look at the new one. No matter how hard I go, it's not giving me any play. And again, I'll show you one more time. Here's the older one. Look how much play I have in that. And again, here's the newer one. I don't get any play that's really strong and sturdy. So again, I'm going to put this on, I'm going to count 14 rotations, here, got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Alright, we're going to tighten up that restraining. Nut once more. I'm gonna get it on there really good and tight using my vice grips, my handy dandy vice grips. Just gonna tighten her up, son. Okay, it's on there really good. That way, we're not having any movement. Now, all we have to do is the reverse from when we took it off, so that'll be really simple. Being that we've done our 14 spins. This is exactly where it was when we took it off, so our alignment should stay uh, pretty much the same. I'm gonna tighten that retaining bolt up some more so that doesn't move from the 14 spins. Now it's time to reassemble everything. We're gonna slide this over here. Again, we're gonna find our hole. Let's put that back on there. I'm gonna get that original uh, castle nut. I'm gonna place her back on. Let me make, she's on, make sure she's on there tight. Good stuff. I'm make sure she's on there really good. We don't want this coming off. If you remember, this thing really came off uh, relatively easy. I don't know if that was a result of the PB blaster or it just wasn't tight on there to begin with. But you want to make sure that these components are on there nice, nicely and snug. Once we have those on there tight, pretty tight and good. We're gonna put our cotter pins back in. Once we have those cotter pins in, we're gonna take one in and put them on each side like that. Now that we have the cotter pin back on, all we have to do is put our tire on. Remember these tires were rubbing on the inside because that tire rod was bad and it was giving so much play. Uh, tire shop's two minutes up the road, so we can get this tire on, get her swapped out. All right, got that bad boy on there. Now it's time just to put those lugs back on it. Those lug nuts. I'm gonna hand tighten them at first. I'm gonna move all these jacks, these uh, Jack stands and everything. She won't need those anymore. Get this tire on, and we're good to go.